Mr. Beast is so generous, even his legal team is getting a cut whether he likes it or not. The last one to sue me gets $100 million. This is uh, the $100 million Mr. Beast Nightmare by Atozi, great YouTuber. Let's check it out in three, two, one. This is easily one of the biggest stories of the year. Largest creator in the world, $100 million deal with one of the largest companies in the world, Amazon. And they go on to create the largest game show ever. And now we somehow have lawsuits and then reports saying that this turned into a fire festival like disaster. So my question, just like everyone else's, what is actually going on and how did we get here? Well, the timeline of events actually went by pretty fast. Yes. Starting with March 18th, 2024, they announced the Beast Games. March 20th, reports surfaced that Mr. Beast secured $100 million for the $100 million Amazon deal for largest competition series. It's a series on Amazon? Hold up, hold up. Everything says it's on Amazon, but I can't find it. I can't find it on Amazon, but apparently it's on there. For the Beast Games, or well, at least for the deal. Sometime around June, they opened the application process, and then they were already filming in mid-July, specifically okay. from 18th to 22nd of July in Las Vegas. And this is where most of the known problems were. It's because filming. a little over a week later, you had a viral New York Times article titled, Willing to Die for Mr. Beast and $5 million. Then only a week later... You okay, to be fair, article titles, that's a headline. That's just, that doesn't interest me as much as what actually happens. You had anonymous contestants sharing their experience with Rosanna Pancino. Then to back up the claims by New York Times and Rosanna, a lawsuit was filed against Mr. Beast and the production companies involved in Amazon MGM. So I posted an interview last Thursday night where I had the contestant run me through the experience of the Beast game. Okay, good. I'm so excited to see this, but I, I, I hate to defend someone. To be clear, you can sue anybody for anything. Whether they win the lawsuit, now that's going to be a punch in the mouth to Mr. Beast. But just him getting sued, that might be frivolous. I'm not saying it is, but you can sue anybody for anything. What became clear to me and everyone else in the comments is that person was extremely biased to Mr. Beast. A few of you guys even wanted me to delete this interview. That would be counterproductive though, as at the end of the day, we want to know what happened there, no matter the narrative. And the narrative is determined by the available information we have, not someone's opinion. True. Even if somebody's biased against somebody, that doesn't mean you don't listen to their opinion. That means you just keep that in your head while you listen. And that's why a lot of you guys were commenting that I was talking to a Mr. Beast plant because the person I was interviewing definitely shared their opinion a lot, which came across as invalidating other people's experiences. And this is why I ended that video saying this. Obviously, me airing this interview is not to take away from the experience of the people who feel wrong from this event. I just think it's important to get as many perspectives as possible out there. But to address the Mr. Beast plant allegations, I can never know 100%, but from what I can tell, I don't think this was the case. Invalidating experiences is like a therapy term that's used a lot. Your experiences are valid, but someone disagreeing with you or calling you a liar, that might also still be valid. You know what I mean? Sometimes the truth is in the middle of two different claims. This person was a contestant who enjoyed their time and is grateful for the opportunity. But again, that doesn't take away from the ones who had a bad experience right. because we learned a lot from my interview. Mainly, the setup of the event was terrible. They had okay. way too many people for the challenges they decided to do and the facilities they had. Because yes, while there's a $5 million prize, there's no benefit in having your contestants feel like absolute trash and trying to compete for it. There's like so many simple things that... I'd rather see a $4 million prize and $1 million spent on making sure that everybody's safe and secure and has food and has has what they need to be healthy and happy during the process. I'd rather see that. And of course, that wouldn't even take a million dollars. So ultimately, whatever did happen is 100% Mr. Beast's fault. That's what I will say. If you're the head of something, if, if you're the CEO, if, if it's your idea you have to take all accountability. You guys know I'm big on accountability. You have to take full accountability. What if an employee didn't do his job right? You hired them. You didn't make sure that they knew what they were doing. It's still your fault. You have to take that accountability. They could have been done way better. And I get, they're trying to go for whatever sounds best in the intro hook. 2,000 people fighting for $5 million? Sounds a whole lot better than 500 people fighting for $5 million. But by simply reducing the amount of people competing could have made everything so much better for everyone. But yeah. we'll get more into that later on. So let's go over the main New York Times and lawsuit allegations and then see if we're able to cross-reference from my interview. So from the New York Times article, the main issues were food scarcity, medical neglect, poor hygiene, 
and chaotic organization. I would say that all of those issues were definitely referenced in my interview. And all of those issues could have taken a small amount of money to fix comparative to the prize pool. I know $5 million brings a lot more viewers than $4 million because five is just a number like that in marketing. Same with seven. And like, like when I sell stuff, I almost always end in 97 cents. It's just a marketing thing that happens to work. And sometimes that number changes. So $5 million brings more views, therefore more money via ad revenue than $4 million. But I would have rather seen, you know, four and a half million dollars in the prize pool or four, $4.9 million. And then you still have a hundred thousand dollars to make sure there's medical staff there, you know, and not food scarcity. It's crazy. So not only do you Neglect. have the people who talked to Rosanna corroborating that, but also the person who talked to me. And with their statements on Rosanna, they definitely didn't talk to Rosanna. So people who had really bad experiences at the event, they corroborated it. And people who had a really good experience at the event also corroborated that. Right. So look at that accidental journalist moment. Am I a journalist? Who knows? I definitely LARP as one sometimes, but at the end of the day, I'm a commentary channel and internet talk show host that talks about laughably stupid stuff. In the Journalists are supposed to have a code. They have a certain code of ethics and one of the codes of ethics that journalists have. I heard Ludwig talking about it is you have to do the least amount of damage when you report stuff. And a lot of journalists don't do that. And, and they kind of aren't supposed to do that anymore because a lot of journalists now it's legally it's been fought in court and they're considered entertainment. Like, for example, Fox News. Not, I, I'm, I don't lean anyway politically. I don't care about politics at all. But Fox News, it, it probably left wing media, too by definition is considered entertainment. So a lot of times what happens is a news segment will be, okay, this, this is, it, it has news in the title and it looks like it has a news reporter, but it's actually for entertainment because it's prime time. So they're allowed to kind of make up more claims that might be true, but they have more allowance to make up claims. And then during the morning hours when it's considered news and not entertainment, they're allowed to say, some people suggest that blah, blah, blah. And they're referencing the same staff that made those claims at night. It's a whole wild thing. So I would never consider myself a journalist either. I'm just a commentary channel. I don't want to, I don't want to have to oblige by those ethics. The internet, largest creator ever doing a $5 million game show and people are calling it a fire festival like disaster. That is laughably stupid. Hence why we're covering it here on this channel. But going back to cross referencing off of my interview, in regards to the chaotic organization, you have the whole intake process that just seemed like a complete disaster. Here's a clip of how chaotic this process was. From the uh, New York Times article, they were saying there was like an intake process. And then like the first day. Is is that true or? Yeah, there was. Uh, so we got there one day and some people got there like two or three days in advance just for planning purposes. But you see stuck in a number of hotels they they split all 2000 people between say like three or four hotels but the intake process happened at rio hotel in like the big grand rooms so eventually throughout your three or four days probably on the day that you got there mine wasn't until like the second or third day but they took you into the room you signed all the paperwork new ndas um all all sorts of stuff and then you basically got like your jersey and then you went back to your hotel room and then waited until they called you down like the morning of to to come down in your jersey and poor planning on their part we could have just worn like our normal civilian clothing but they put us all in trash bags i guess like that was a last minute decision which didn't help because then people were like why why are there a thousand people in a hotel in trash bags that like raised some controversy right there the trash bags were hot you know you could just rip bigger armholes or like suck it up uh, um, yeah, that wasn't like a good decision on anyone's part. I don't know who that was, Why but it probably wasn't Mr. Beast bags? directly. And then, so, okay, so you were put in trash bags, and then what happened once Why? you were put into trash bags? Why? Once we were put into trash bags, uh, well, they fed us breakfast. They, you had the opportunity to go get your own breakfast before the yeah. trash situation. Then it was like three or four hours of waiting until we got to the Rio Hotel, and they put us in the big grand rooms with, say, like 500 people in each room. Okay. And they would, they would sporadically bring out food. They offered water. You could go to the bathroom. Uh, and yeah. So like we, we stood in those halls for another like six hours. I, I could imagine. Until we finally were bused My God. to Allegiant Stadium. I was an extra in a Channing Tatum movie. And there is just, it's all standing around. It's all waiting. It is so boring. All right, guys, you can't have your phones, but put on these trash bags and wait around for like six hours. 
have fun. I get that obtaining NDA and liability signatures for 2,000 people, that takes time, but there has to be a more efficient way of doing this. Like, I just can't picture someone in a boardroom saying, hey, what if we put all of the contestants in trash bags and have them wait around for six hours? It's simple. You have more lawyers or more people distribute the NDAs. You don't do it one at a time. It's just a money issue. It's literally just a money issue. If, if, if you can't have people sign NDAs one at a time, unless you only have, if the lawyer has to do the process or whatever, whatever legal profession has to do that process of overseeing people sign the NDAs, just have 10 of them instead of two. And it would have went five times as fast. It's very simple. And then we'll bust them to the stadium. They'll love that. That just doesn't seem like something well planned. This is why project managers are so important. A project manager would have, a good project manager, manager would have been able to fix all of this. It seems like something that was just poorly improvised. And I know yeah. they blame CrowdStrike for a lot of the chaos, but I also think that was for getting people home. As my understanding is everyone waiting around the hotels and the trash bags, that was on the 18th of July. And the CrowdStrike incident happened on the 19th of July. So I don't know what was going on with this intake process, but moving on, you had the lack of medical supplies. And this portion of my interview definitely surprised me that they handled it like this. When did the, the lack of like medical supplies and stuff like that come up. So when you went into the Rio, you kind of like handed off your medical supplies for the Beast Games and they were going to handle the logistics of it. That just doesn't make sense to me. I, I guess it depends on how important that medication is. But insulin? if it's like an inhaler or insulin, that should be pocketed or had in a small bag that's nearby. I don't know if there's a chance that I can die. Some insulins have to be refrigerated, though, to be fair from not having an inhaler or something important like that, you wouldn't be able to separate me from that thing. And the organizers really shouldn't be putting a contestant in that situation. And then you are in the, like, should people that require insulin to compete in a show like this, knowing it's more risky for your health? And if so, like, you can't say nobody on insulin is allowed to enter. That's just way against the law. Too. So it's a problem where they get separated from it because it's just too risky for everyone involved. So I have no idea why they would handle it like that. But next up, you have the injuries. The game testers they had test it didn't account for $5 million being on the line and like an actual like 2,000 people playing this game because we got, we finished the challenge in like a minute, like under a minute. And then that fifth team didn't even get like close to finishing. Right. Oh, wow. So but I think I, I was toward the middle, and I think some people in the rear, once you started actually pulling the rope, everyone got bunched up in the rear. It's possible people accidentally got injured, but yeah. I don't know if I would say that it's the fault of any one individual. Crowd it's crush. just that when you have 500 or 400 people, basically on two sides of a rope, that spans the length of the football stadium. So when everyone starts pulling back, people are going to get jumbled in the rear. And mm -hmm. just kind of like punch so, so it was like a it was a tug of war with four hundred people on each side. The four hundred people, two hundred on each side of an individual rope, and those two hundred people make the length of the football stadium, like yeah. right off. The bat. So if you don't pull the rope and like keep your feet where they are, and you start walking the rope back, everyone gets bunched up in the back. I believe this guy, even though he's anonymous, I fully believe what he's saying. I fully believe what he's saying. And so right, that okay. caused injury when people were like falling on each other. Yeah. But I mean, that's, it's, that's just kind of what happened. I don't think it's any one person's fault. Someone got injured and nobody was trying to injure anyone Mr. in that Beast's challenge. Fault. So I do not agree with this person here. And there's a lot in this interview that I didn't agree with them on, but I wanted to hear their experience. And if I spent a lot of that time pushing back and arguing, right. I wouldn't be able to hear the full experience. People need to realize if you're interviewing somebody, it's not your job to argue back if you're trying to get content because then you have 20 more questions you want to ask and now he's defensive and won't give you the answers. It makes a worse interview. People don't realize that. But this is definitely the organizer's fault. If you didn't have enough space for the challenge and people got injured because of that, that's on the organizer. At yeah. the very least, they should have divided them up into smaller groups to prevent the bunching in the back or had fewer people in the competition or done a different challenge that didn't require so much space. So from the interview, we learned there was a tug of war and a briefcase challenge that ended up injuring people. There was even an elder person who apparently broke some ribs in the mm. briefcase challenge. But this person also allegedly showed back up to the event in Canada afterwards. And the briefcase challenge is a little bit harder to judge as we don't 
really have any footage for it yet, but it definitely doesn't sound good. The person I interviewed also mentioned that contestants that shoved people in this challenge allegedly were eliminated. So if that's true, at least that's positive. Next up from the New York Times allegations, you had poor hygiene. And this is where most people got upset when the person I interviewed said it was like camping in response to a woman being denied pats. And that's something that really shouldn't be denied as that can lead to serious problems. And the organizers know this as there's no shot there's zero women involved in the organization. Because I mean, hey, it goes without saying there can be some serious health consequences if you don't change those female hygiene products. And That's this is crazy. just another clear case for why there should have been way fewer people. So they could have been way more attentive to each contestant. I'm not a woman, I don't know how that works. I'm just gonna side with they should have had the supplies they needed. So crap like this doesn't happen. I also want to apologize for not making it more clear that I didn't endorse that statement. The other big hygiene Stop problem was a porta potty leaking onto the field. <laughs> and that had to be cleaned up by staff that didn't have the equipment to do so or training to do so. Don't have a porta potty if you don't have the equipment to clean it up. But again, this is just poor planning. Allegedly. And that's just another nightmare right there for the people that had to clean it up, but also the poor people that were stuck having to sleep or rest near that pot porta potty zone. And the last allegation from the New York Times article was poor communication, which seems very apparent from every single source we've heard from. Then you had the lawsuit allegations where the main ones were misclassification of contestants as independent contractors. And that's kind of a California argument as they're arguing this based on California laws, even though this has nothing to do with California in regards to the competition as it was in Nevada, hmm. Canada, and North Carolina. Contestants applied to become contestants not to be employed by Mr. Beast. But yeah. next up, you had unlawful contract terms. I can't add anything there because I haven't seen the contracts, nor am I a lawyer. And you had failure to- Unlawful contract terms is a, is, a, is a real thing. You can't have anything in a contract that's illegal. It's instantly void. Pay minimum wage and overtime. So from my interview, we found out the contestants were paid $1,000. Then $1,000 more later on after, I guess a bunch of the negative PR started coming out. And according to the person, I mean, if you sign a contract, you can sign a contract for less than minimum wage, especially if you're not a worker or considered employed. I, I don't think that's a big deal. You know what I mean? And also they could have found people who are willing to do this cont uh, contest for free. Person I interviewed to claim the thousand more dollars. Apparently you didn't have to sign any more paperwork saying you weren't gonna sue the Mr. Beast Productions or anything like that. So, I mean, if that's true, that's another positive. So four days of filming, $2,000 yeah. divided by what? 96 hours, because I mean, you're there the whole time. You're a little north of like $20 an hour. Yes, I calculated that earlier. I'm no head math wizard. But overall, I mean, not bad, especially if you got PTO from your regular job to go do this. But I guess that is if you didn't end up in the hospital, have yep. a seizure, or have to sleep in sewage from a leaking porta potty, or denied mm -hmm. hygiene products. There are some variables here, but if those negative variables didn't happen, it doesn't sound terrible. But next in the lawsuit you had to- Of course, if the negative things happen, didn't happen, it doesn't sound terrible. That That's a silly thing to say. Nile of meal and rest breaks. So the person I interviewed claimed the meals were okay, but got better over time. So I guess take that how you will. And then in regards to the breaks, it seemed like the the whole thing was just a big break. It sounded like they were playing waiting simulator more than the beast games, Yeah. but they filmed at night and the ceiling is see-through. So it was straight daylight when they could finally sleep. So not only was it a waiting simulator, but also they Jake Weddled all of the beast games contestants by not turning off the lights. The lights were off, but you know, the, the sun was just beaming at them, which probably had the contestants like this, but moving on, you had unsafe and inhumane working conditions, which I used to work at night and the sun glaring in your eyes is so annoying when you're trying to sleep. Honestly, could be plausible. I mean, if the elderly are being bodied over some briefcases and women are being denied hygiene products, that's not good. And you have no. sexual harassment and hostile work environment, which is kind of hard to comment on as the lawsuit was vague around this topic and we haven't really heard anything specific. Then you have unfair business practices and then misleading advertising and false statements, which I think was about the amount of contestants. Originally, people thought there was gonna be a thousand others, 
when they showed up to the event, there was 2,000 people. And finally, you had Nevada tax credit discrepancies, which is clearly way above my pay grade to be able to answer. So yeah. let's get to my opinion. This whole thing just sounds like an absolute shit show to me. Obviously, when you're running an event with 2,000 people involved, there's going to be a lot of variables and plenty of things that can go wrong. And they did. I think the biggest mistake is the scale they went for. Since it seemed like the Mr. Beast team jumped from doing challenges from like 50 to 100. I see two ways this is going to go. I see one way because what he's being sued for like six, seven different things at once in this lawsuit or whatever. So number one, I mean, most likely he's going to get tagged with one or two of them. And then like five or six, the rest is, are going to get thrown out. Normally that's how it works. The judge doesn't normally side 100% for it or against. He's going to look at every claim individually and then see what evidence there is. And if the evidence supports the claim that the people suing him are making beyond a reasonable doubt. And sometimes you, you might know that something's true, but there's not enough evidence to support it. So it has to get thrown out because it is all about evidence. You are guilty or sorry, you are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. And no matter how this goes, you're going to have two camps of people, one camp of people. See, these six or seven things they sued for, nothing even happened. They got thrown out. And so they're going to defend Mr. Beast. And then the other camp of people are going to say, hey, these two things Mr. Beast got sued for actually happened. He actually had to pay for these two things. So Mr. Beast is the worst person ever. And the people who are for Mr. Beast are still going to be for him. The people who are against Mr. Beast are still going to be against him. That's how I see this playing out. People to 2000 people. Having fewer people would have made it so much easier to go the extra step for everyone. For example, why didn't they have pillows? Why weren't there hygiene product dispensers by the porta potties? Why didn't they have sleeping bag mats? That's actually a real thing, not some funny Matt City promo segue. Yeah. It's actually a mat you place beneath your sleeping bag to give you a little cushion and help okay. insulate you from the ground to keep you warm. I get it's a business and you want to stay as profitable as possible, so cutting corners is tempting, but Mr. Beast is a personality brand. His reputation, credibility is everything. So it's in his best interest to go above and beyond for his contestants. And from what we've heard, that wasn't the case. A lot Not of people also ask me why I didn't interview other women or other contestants. And that's simply because nobody else has reached out that I could actually verify was a contestant. And I mean, the contestants are under NDA, so I understand why it's like risky for people to talk to me. Right. But that's why I didn't interview multiple people for that last video. I have received DMs claiming that there were problems with the Canadian event as well, but nothing that's actually verifiable. Because I mean, if there is no way for me to verify- Do you know how I have ADHD? I'm wondering why people are driving on the left side of this road. Are people driving on the left side? So it must not be in the United States, right? Isn't that crazy that that's where my mind goes? By this information is accurate, I can't just blast it out there. As of now, from what I can tell, it seems like most of the contestants had an overall positive experience with the event, even though all the hiccups were there. Hence no. why we haven't seen way more whistleblowers yet. But that might not be true. A lot of people might be too scared of the NDAs to say anything. We don't know yet how most people feel. We can't make that claim. This definitely doesn't take away from those who had negative experiences, though, as there are many things that could have been done to prevent all of this. But I guess that's the current ongoing $100 million nightmare for Mr. Beast. Okay, great video by Atozi. Listen, y'all, I'm gonna link the original video, so look for that in the description. Give it a thumbs up. Give this video a thumbs up. If you wanna watch the original without me blabbing, check that out. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please subscribe so I can pay my water bill. That's all I need in my life. Okay, bye guys.